In today's video, I want to compare different Wi-Fi 7 compatible cards for both PC and laptops to see if they all perform the same now that Wi-Fi 7 routers and access points are available. I randomly purchased three PCI adapter cards and two laptop cards to provide a representative sample of performance. The goal is to see if they all perform about the same and to see if it's worthwhile to upgrade to Wi-Fi 7. If you want to find out more about these cards and see the performance results, then stick around for the rest of this video. If you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notifications. And don't forget to give it a like if you find this video useful as it does help promote the channel. Back in early 2021, I compared some Wi-Fi 6E PCI cards to see if they all performed the same and found that they were all very close in performance between each other. Now that Wi-Fi 7 is available in its early release and gaining popularity, I wanted to test not only the performance of these cards, but to see if the performance gain of Wi-Fi 7 over Wi-Fi 6 and 6E was noticeable. To set the stage, I recently purchased a Unify U7 Pro access point for testing. And when I tested it with current Wi-Fi 6E and, and 6 devices, I didn't see much of a difference despite the claims that Wi-Fi 7 is more efficient and performs better with older devices. This led me to want to actually test Wi-Fi 7 devices to see if there would be a performance jump. All the testing will be done on my Unify U7 Pro, and in comparison, Wi-Fi 6 and 6E will be done on the Unify U6 Enterprise, which also supports 6 GHz. Both of these are plugged into a Unify Enterprise 8 PoE Plus switch that has 2.5 gig PoE ports, which is what's needed to support these higher speeds. I'll be running these tests using iPerf 3 as in my experience this provides the best representation of capabilities and performance. Let's quickly go through the cards and see what they come with and talk about their specs. All these cards support tri-band 320MHz channel width for 6GHz and use the Intel BE200 chipset. I use the Intel driver which I downloaded from the Intel site to keep things consistent. The first card is the T-Day Wi-Fi 7 PCIe card. It's a pretty generic card which doesn't even have a company logo on it. It states the tri-band performance of 5.8 gigabits per second at 6 gigahertz, 2400 megabits per second at 5 gigahertz, and 574 megabits per second at 2.4 gigahertz. It has Bluetooth 5.4 support and WPA3 wireless security, which is now a requirement for Wi-Fi 7. Next we have the OKN Wi-Fi 7 PCI Express card. It lists slightly different specs on the documentation and claims 5.8 gigabits per second at 6 gigahertz and 2880 megabits per second at 5 gigahertz and 574 megabits per second at 2.4 gigahertz. As the other card, it also supports Bluetooth 5.4 and WPA3. For the last PCI Express card is the QFly. Identical specs to the first card and claims 5.8 gigabits per second at 6 gigahertz, 2400 megabits per second at 5 gigahertz, and 574 megabits at 2.4 gigahertz. And as the other cards do, it also supports Bluetooth 5.4 and WPA wireless security. Now let's take a quick look at the laptop cards. When I bought these, I only bought two of them as they're all virtually identical so I mainly wanted to see if there was a difference between the two, but mostly how they compared to the PCI version. The first card is a High Zero Electronics. As with almost all the other cards, the stated specs are 5.8 gigabits per second at 6 gigahertz, 2400 megabits per second at 5 gigahertz, and 574 megabits per second at 2.4. And as all the other PCI cards do, this also supports Bluetooth 5.4 and WPA3. Lastly is the NetGiga Wi-Fi 7 wireless card, which like all the others has the same specs. 5.8 gigabits per second at 6, 2400 megabits per second at 5, and 574 megabits at 2.4 gigahertz, with the same Bluetooth 5.4 and WPA3 support. So as you can see, with the exception of the OKN, all the other cards have almost identical specs. Now that we've seen the cards, let's run these five cards through iPerf 3 and see if they perform basically the same or if we can see any variation. I'm using iPerf 3 for all my measurements as in my opinion it's the best way to test networking speeds because it lets you push the capacity by using multi-streams 
which is now a big feature of Wi-Fi 7. Since there's so much variation to Wi-Fi based on environment, distance, interference, and settings, here are my channel width settings that I'm using as a baseline. These may not be optimal for your environment, but this is what I found that works best for me, and we'll keep these same settings throughout all the testing. Your results may vary based on your own environment, but channel width can have the biggest impact to your overall Wi-Fi performance. To establish a comparative baseline, let's look at a couple of measurements from my current Wi-Fi 6E configuration. In my current configuration, I'm running 5 GHz with a channel width of 80 MHz and a 6 GHz with a channel width of 160 MHz, which is the max for the Enterprise U6. In comparison, the Wi-Fi 7 is running the same 80 MHz channel for 5 GHz and I'm using 320 MHz channel, which is now the max for Wi-Fi 7. The first card we're going to test is the T-Day PCI Express card. As you can see from these results, the performance is pretty good, ending up at about 1.47 gigabits per second, which is really good, especially in comparison to my baseline results. The next card is the OKN PCI Express card. And as we run through these tests, you're going to see that it's performing very close to the T-Day card, coming in at about 1.47. 0.54 gigabits per second, which again is really good results. Lastly, we have the QFly card, but as you can see, I got some pretty horrible results from this card, and it came in as the absolute slowest card. I tried several times and couldn't get anything better out of this card, coming in at about 1.03 gigabits per second. Looking at the first laptop card, again, we're seeing that we're getting some really good performance that's on par with some of the other cards, and it's coming in at about 1.37 gigabits per second, which is pretty good for a laptop card. And lastly is the NIC Giga card. Again, we can see some pretty good performance that's competitive with all the cards, except for, of course, the QFly card, which was horrible. And it comes in at about 1.42 gigabits per second. In summary, it's pretty obvious that even though there are speed differences between these cards, with the exception of the QFly, which performed pretty badly, most of the other cards were similar, and at least within the margin of error, given the antenna position and other factors. As they all use the same chipset and the same drivers, you should expect to get very good performance for most of the cards that you purchase today. As for Wi-Fi 7 itself, the gain is pretty significant, at least in my testing. And as more devices support this standard, performance all around will be increased. I plan to upgrade my two Enterprise U6 access points as soon as the Wi-Fi 7 version becomes available. Anyway, that's about it for today's video, so I hope you found it useful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help promote the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.